Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist from Off The Cuff. Today we have a really awesome debut for you guys uh, from Spinnaker. A little bit about them. They are a brand offering classic nautical design aesthetics at a really affordable price within a modern package. Now, this particular type of watch is a dive watch, some key common characteristics and design language. When you're looking for a diver, you're gonna want something that's water resistant, typically with some type of screw down crown. You're gonna want something that's tough, legible with a dive time bezel and a diver's extension is always nice if on bracelets. This is the Spinnaker Spence 300 in the pitch black variation. And it's essentially an ultra thin diver still capable of 300 meters or 1,000 feet of water resistance. This is awesome. Like, <laughs> I think that's something in terms of key common characteristics with a diver. A lot of times it's a thick watch um, because it has to be robust enough to take on all of that water pressure. And in this case, they've really done something special. Um, as much hype as there is around the Slim Turtle, which I'm really excited about being um, Seiko's thinnest automatic diver um, at about 12.2 uh, millimeters thick, this uh, watch here is, is uh, extremely thin by comparison at about 10.8 millimeters thin so uh very very impressive guys the price on here is 650 so a little bit more of a premium from um spinnaker but definitely more of a premium product i would say that this is their best yet in terms of what they offer this is something that is very very special um it's it has you know other great dimensions 40 millimeters it has that big crown aesthetic it has you know pretty much everything you look for from a dive watch without necessarily uh you know being too much of an homage to any one particular diver um that came before it so it's nice i can appreciate that there are a couple of different color combinations the one that uh spinnaker was able to provide for me here is the black which was kind of my preference because i think that this one definitely helps show kind of the classic nature and it also i think opens the door to it being a real strap monster and it does even come with a bonus strap in within the carrying case that it came in so with all that said bit of a long intro <laughs> But let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand, and take a closer look. All right, guys. So let's just get straight to it. Let's look at this. Yes. Look at how thin that is. Um, of course, you've seen similar brands come out with similar silhouettes in terms of that big crown layout and a toothy flat bezel and, and it being thin. I'll say uh, this versus the competitors. The main difference is how thin this case back is. Uh, I have definitely seen some, let me just give it a quick wipe here, some similar uh, case designs from other brands. But this case back for me is how thin that it sits. Um, wow, I mean, it's it's kind of revolutionary. Like the rest of the case, of course, hey, modernized vintage big crown stylings, that's not necessarily a new uh, development, but that case back, how low that it sits is outstanding. The beautiful curve on these lugs. So let's go over the dimensions. 40 millimeters uh, in diameter, 10.8 millimeters thin, um, and that is including that slightly domed crystal, which is double domed, so you do get nice legibility even at quite harsh angles there. Um, lug to lug, it's 48.1, so if you do have a uh, larger wrist, I think this is still going to wear well, um, you know, and if you have a smaller wrist, I think it'll still wear fine. I probably maybe wouldn't wear it on the basic because it does have the male end links, which do add a little bit of extra ultimate um, length on it from lug to lug, um, but doesn't bother me as somebody with a larger wrist, but for those of you with smaller wrists, I think you're going to probably uh, prefer this one on like a nylon NATO style strap or, or um, you know, a Tropic or something like that. But I think this is great. Um, if I was to change one thing, I would probably either have it have female end links or just have the male end link uh, turned down to follow the contour of the edge of the case a little bit more closely here. It does come out a little bit more, and that might be by design to, you know, since it is a smaller watch, um, you know, to, to help kind of lengthen the case and make it a little bit more versatile. But, you know, at the end of the day, somebody's sweet spot is gonna be just out of somebody else's range, so you, you know, I can't uh, have it all. Uh, but they do a great job with this one. I, I think the proportions and the styling are really, really nice. Now, 
you do get uh, again you're getting sapphire which is fantastic now the insert is aluminum and it is partially loomed you're getting not just the 12 o'clock loom pit but you're also getting these hash markers here that are offset from the numerals are also loomed and then there's even a little loom pip underneath each one of those so pretty much every five minutes which is great you're getting a 120 click bezel let's get it very nice fast slow dialed in so very nice and one more click bam nicely aligned there so really great from that perspective nice tactile engagement obviously it's a bit on the thin side so grabbing it isn't going to be as easy as maybe some of the other models that you've had in the past but it all makes sense it has a thin profile so you're just going to have to be a little bit more deliberate with it but it absolutely works and then another thing that i think is even uh I think on a tactile perspective is even nicer is this crown, the screw down crown, really nicely placed, nice and grippy, oversized, um, and it screws in. And you can see actually the crown tube there is quite robust. So very nice, screws in well. And the nice thing as well is that if you take a look here, the gap on it, it there's not any Thing you have to worry about any overhang anything hitting anything else so you're going to get the edge of the uh the bezel there and then the edge of the crown and there's still a nice amount of clearance which i can appreciate so really nice from that perspective as well and again guys 300 meters of water resistance that's awesome <laughs> again everybody's really excited for <laughs> seiko's you know 12 and a quarter millimeter thick 200 meter diver this is 300 meters for under 11 millimeters at 10.8 so again this is so thin and, and not to the point to where it feels like that's a one trick pony it's just a thin diver that you know is thin and then compromises in other areas i think it's still really well balanced you can see the bracelet here it has 20 millimeter lugs which makes it a strap monster but the bracelet it comes on is nicely articulated full three links there not any faux you know engravings to make it look like it's a you know three link when it's really just one or two um, this is actually fully articulated which means it's going to drape really really nicely you get a milled clasp which i'd say um you know comparatively the milled clasp might be just a touch chunky compared to the watch case but it's milled so i mean that's really something that when it's the other way around and you have something pressed you know it, it's it's kind of always a quick point of contention so to have it fully milled uh you know i think it's it's kind of hard to complain about that uh oh actually is this all the way clicked in oh let me make sure it's all the way down and then bam so very very secure very nice top down uh, but I will say that you know from this perspective when you do have it on there can be a little bit of a gap because of just how thin the link is versus the whole placement I like to have extra links tucked into there um, but if you were to shorten it um, and basically just maybe being within the last two holes the angle on the drop would be less drastic and you'd see it probably you know with a gap looking closer to that versus here it's a bit extreme um but yeah again that's more of kind of a nitpicky thing not something you'll notice too much on wrist but as a reviewer you know those are the kind of details that i like to get down into now in terms of the dial it's a matte dial no date which is great the movements and no date movement miyota 9039 um you're getting everything painted pretty much on the indexes. Um, you're getting brushed hands with that nice painted accent on the lollipop of the seconds hand. And then you're getting Swiss Super Luminova, which glows really brightly. Um, and then again, you just have to remind my, I mean, this type of watch, I would almost expect to be like, you know, 100, 150 meters of water resistance just because of how thin it is. And, and I mean, look, at I didn't even mention the bevels, guys. Did you? Look at these bevels. Like, I mean, sure they're not some, you know, here, let me give it a give them a quick wipe here off camera to really accentuate them. I'm sure they're not the sharpest transitions ever, you know, this isn't Grand Seiko or anything like that. Um, but 
for a really nice uh, affordable watch under a thousand bucks really um you know at 650 under 700 bucks um this is very cool um so you are getting nice elements of design you're getting a lot of classic aesthetics rolled into a package that yeah it has an air of classic um you know styling to it that can be a lot more timeless and less contemporary but the contemporary portion is you know this technology being able to shrink it down get it very very thin so i can appreciate that uh the bracelet does have a slight taper to it so it's going to taper down just two millimeters so starts at 20 comes down to 18 and then you get to this milled clasp um, which is nice and then it also comes with an extra strap so actually let's get this on the wrist see how it wears and then you know maybe we can go through the packaging as well all right guys as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist wears really well there is a lot of data there in terms of the indexing you know the more maxi sized um uh indices there but i think everything's really well balanced you can see even the 12 o'clock loom pip is actually very comparable to the size of the actual circular loom plops there um in the hour and who as you'd expect it just lays and hugs the wrist beautifully. And you can see the male end link doesn't hurt too much in terms of uh, adding any overhang or any extra length. But then again, I do have a larger wrist. But, uh, you know, even get more arm there within the uh, frame. And you can see it wears really well, has a lot of punch, especially for just, you know, a lot of people's sweet spot, which is a 40 millimeter sports watch. But I do want to touch on this really cool uh it's a for me what i can tell it's a really really nice deep navy blue carrying case of course the spinnaker n there um and we open and check it out so there's a little area here which i would put kind of extra links getting your paperwork whatnot uh, this is what you have it wrapped around when you have it uh uh, before you size everything so bracelet there really really fantastic straps from here guys let me just so this is actually a, a water resistant leather uh, it also has a similar taper uh, down to 18 millimeters but check out the class i'm um, check out the tang buckle i should say on this even the finger is milled milled signed nicely brushed great contours look at that just you even have a nice undercut right here so that when it engages with the strap, check that out. So really, really nice touch. Um, I'm a bracelet guy, but I have to say that this is really well appointed. I like the vintage style little stitch there. So this will look fantastic on here as well would have been maybe nice if they would have done quick release spring bars but there's no quick release um on the bracelet so i think you know kind of makes sense for it to just uh you know uh, be a little bit more basic from that perspective but man this is a really really nice strap um i'm really surprised oh actually very pliable too let me show that to you and it even has a tapering thickness which will help it be planted on the wrist because you're gonna get that thickness up top where you need it and then underneath the wrist where the, it's gonna double up in material, it's actually quite thin by comparison to up here. So it's gonna keep things more balanced and yeah, I think it's a great, again, that vintage look. Really, really nice, very handsome. So very impressed uh, from there. Let me just put this back in here. And then the nice thing is you can out, and you're also getting, of course, a little tool here, but you can actually pull the foam out and you have more spaces. So you could put a watch here, tuck the head in and you know have the bracelet or the strap holding on there. Um, and you don't even need to use this foam insert, but the foam insert is there. It's usable, everything can kind of pull out and whatnot. Um, but then you do have, of course, one side, you're getting a punch, the other side, you're gonna be getting the little pincer for the spring bar removal, uh, which is great. And I can just push up this uh, foam here. You can take a look. So, very cool, very useful, especially when it's small like that. Um, and you know, if you were to take this with you traveling, 
and you don't necessarily even need the the uh, the foam insert because you could still tuck it into any one of these pockets but this is really nice check out the zip action on it um, you can see nicely sealed not a lot exposing and then the teeth of the zips are I think even really well shielded so that you don't have to worry about anything being scratched you have this great lip that comes around here so that you're not worrying about you know getting anything scratched up needlessly so very cool I, I think very conclusive package especially considering what you're paying um, you know they're not just charging you more money because this is their favorite watch they're, they're actually trying to add value and uh, and give you something I think very special so very nice from that perspective but let's get it off the wrist get into some loom shots the light transition and closing thoughts Okay, we'll go ahead and hit the lights here. Yes, very nice loom. You can see again, even those little plots there that are underneath the numerals are giving you a little bit of extra blast. So you are getting some nice legibility within the darkness, within the depths, uh, which is great. And this thing glows very bright considering, especially that it's all printed and you know, it's meant to be relatively thin. So sometimes those types of things can be a bit of a trade-off when you start thinking about that loom application and hey maybe you're not going to apply it as thickly etc so still nicely applied um, and does the job especially considering the thinness but one thing i like to work in is some low light transition uh, within the loom shots because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight a lot of times you're going to find yourself coming in and out of a building walking underneath an overhang maybe the shade of a tree or just spending time in your favorite automobile. So it is really nice to see how these watches finishes, textures and colors render in less than optimal lighting conditions. And as you can see, the black there is very deep, even though it's not a reflective, you know, or, or inky black, it still is quite nice. And it's really only at certain angles. You can see like this here, very much a, a harsher lighting angle where you're going to be able to get more of that washout and that kind of anthracite finish within the mat and then you can see the bezel insert does the same thing so very very cool they play off of each other really well but you can see that for the most part mixed lighting these things appear nice and dark as they should, which is gonna give you nice contrast uh, for legibility purposes. And you can also notice that bracelet, the chamfer on the bezel, I'm sorry, on the, on the bevel of the case uh, there, that chamfering uh, holds the light and reflects it really beautifully. And then, you know, quite uniform on the brushing coming up and down the links there, so very handsome and you know there's actually a lot of visual play and interest that can happen due to the lighting um, even though the watch itself is quite stark and very plain um, so guys closing thoughts here on the wrist wears really great super thin and lays very flat for a secure feel that really locks in and then kind of melts away um, so you know you lock this thing onto the wrist and then you can i'd say you can kind of forget about it because it is thin it's pretty light i mean it's not titanium or anything but it has relatively light links light case um and it's still you know well balanced you do have that very robust feeling clasp that might be just a touch bulky compared to the case and bracelet um but it's milled right and i think if they would have went the other direction with it and done any part of it stamped to kind of follow the flow then folks would have complained so you know you can't make everybody happy um luckily though uh you, you know this does have a 20 millimeter lug width so it opens up a lot of alternatives um if you wanted to provide anything you know to include the the, the leather the strap that comes with it but if you do want to throw it on like a nylon on uh, you know a single pass or double pass nato style strap or wrap strap be great or um, a rubber dive strap whether it be something more classic like a tropic or just something very clean and modern um you know this is one of those really nice fkm rubbers that everybody's kind of coming out with right now so there's a lot of options there in terms of model variants of this particular model there's 
the indigo blue, the hickory brown, the sea green, the crimson red, and then this being the pitch black as seen. Um, those, some of those other models, one of the cool features is they actually do have a bit of a kind of gradient and dial where you're gonna get like lighter colors towards the center and that gets slowly darker, which ties into the more darker tone of each of their bezel inserts. So cool options from that perspective. Um, and then when I get into, I guess, comparable models, Yes, the 650 asking price elevates this thin yet capable diver into very competitive waters, but I think it's felt form factor paired with the strong specs and the aesthetic. Um, I think it should have a decent amount of crossover appeal uh, between casual buyers and enthusiasts. So I think that's why it'll probably be very successful. I mean, Spinnaker is a brand that you can find, uh, you know, on site <laughs> for you to buy at, at certain locations. And it's also one you can go online and, you know, uh, a lot of different retailers carry this, this brand. Um, and I think this aesthetic will speak to a lot of folks i mean just in the same way that a lot of these great vintage aesthetics from some more mainstream brands have really you know gathered a lot of attention from even the non-enthusiasts so for me the bottom line this is absolutely my favorite new spinnaker and yeah i'd say it's their finest diver yet and i'm definitely looking forward how they to see how they continue um to evolve and put out uh, more cool fun stuff like this again not super groundbreaking uh, in terms of what it's doing um, there's definitely a lot of watches that look uh, similar from that perspective but uh, yeah Spinnaker I think they, they they've done a great job of uh, you know working on that same template and adding their own spice to it uh, without overpowering uh, a really cool idea so with that said let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please give it a like and if you haven't already please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys mm -hmm.